Welcome one and all to Venn Diagram Showdown. This is Math for Econ and Business. Full disclosure, this video is not sponsored by any sushi or ramen shop, and no sushi nor ramen has been harmed in the making of this video. They are just meant to illustrate how Venn Diagram works and how working with sets can actually be fun and can be applicable in the world of econ and business. But if you'd like to check out the sushi versus ramen Japan food battle, the YouTube channel Visit Japan has an interesting video that you can check out. I'll provide the link in the description below. And this is the full English version of this video. If you'd like to watch it in bilingual English and Bahasa, there's another video that I will provide the link for. So to start, there can be a lot of applications of set and Venn diagram in the world of business and economics. This is just one of them. Let's say, for example, you own a sushi and ramen restaurant and your staff has been divided into two teams. One is Team Sushi and the other is Team Ramen. They both are arguing that one is more popular than the other in your restaurant. As a manager, one way that you can prove this is by crunching the numbers. To truly get the answer that is based on data and not just supposition. And as such, we can say that we use data and math to settle the battle. The battle between sushi versus ramen. Once you collect a set of data, then you can process it to become information. And this information can become a knowledge for you and your business and your team. And as such, that can become a wisdom. This process is called knowledge management. If you'd like to learn more about knowledge management, I'll provide a link for my course contents on knowledge management in the description below. But back to math. Actually, back to sushi and ramen, as well as math. So let's say you'd like to look at the data from your sales. You found a pattern that some customers only order sushi, other customers only order ramen, while some order both in the same check, and some order neither. Now, how would you use this information and present it in the Venn diagram? For example, let's say you've collected 250 of the most recent restaurant orders at your place, and you found out that 130 of the check ordered sushi, 165 ordered ramen, 95 ordered both sushi and ramen. Some questions that may arise that can become information and knowledge for us later is that how many people order neither sushi nor ramen when they come to your restaurant, even though your restaurant's name is sushi and ramen. But maybe some people just come for drinks, or maybe they just like the company. How many people ordered only sushi? And how many people ordered ramen only? Let's use our learning of set that we've learned from the last video and Venn diagram to illustrate this. To begin with, your universe, in this case, what is being observed consists of 250 observations, or the cardinal number of the universe is 250. The cardinal number of S, which represents sushi, here is 130. The cardinal number of R, representing ramen, is 165. That's known. And the last one, the cardinal number of S intersection R is 95. You are asked to determine what is the cardinal number of S union R complement. How many restaurant orders are outside of these two Venn diagrams? Then you are also asked how many people order only sushi. So the cardinal number of S minus R. And how many people ordered only ramen? The cardinal number of R minus S. Let's find out. So we know that N of S is 130, and n of r is 165, and n of s intersection r is 95. So there's your Venn diagram. But stop to think for a second. Does this really answer the question? When you look at it closely, 130 plus 95 plus 165 equals 390. Now 390 is larger than your universe combined, which is 250. Now there must be something wrong here. What you need to pay attention to is you cannot count an occurrence more than once. In this case, the 95 people who order sushi and ramen are counted twice. And as such, this answer is wrong. And it makes no sense because what's inside the Venn diagram is actually larger than the universe itself. So we need to redo this. 
Now here's the correct way. You start with the 95, the one in the intersection, the one in the middle. N of S intersection R. That's 95. Then you go to the left with S to determine that the number of orders that has sushi in them only is 130 minus 95 because the 95 is already in the intersection of S and R, which leaves you with 35 on the S side. We do the same with the R side. That's 165 minus 95, which equals to 70. Out of the 165, 95 are already in the intersection part, and thus we are left with the 70, which is only on the R side. Now using the process of elimination, you know that your universe consists of 250 occurrences. We just need to subtract 35, 95, and 70 out of the 250 total, which gives us 50. And that fits your entire universe. And so the cardinal number of S union R complement is 250 minus 35 plus 95 plus 70, which all equals to 50. Now there's another way to do this, which is by formula. Cardinal number of S union R is cardinal number of S plus the cardinal number of R minus the cardinal number of S intersection R. In our case, an S is 130, the entirety, plus NR 165 minus 95. We have to subtract 95 because you cannot count it twice. It has to be counted only once. Since this 95 belongs to S as well as to R, that means you have to subtract it. We are left with 130 plus 165 minus 95, which is 200. Now, in order to find a complement, you just need to subtract the universe from the cardinal number of S union R. 250 minus 200, that's 50. Either way, you find the correct answer at 50. To answer the next two questions, let's look at it this way. NS minus R is NS minus NS intersection R. 130 minus 95 is 35 just like we've worked out earlier. N R minus S is N R minus N S intersection R, which in this case is 165 minus 95, which equals to 70. Now given the raw data that we've processed into information, which hopefully is meaningful, we have gained some knowledge that at least in your restaurant, ramen is more popular than sushi. As a manager, you also need to consider that 50 out of the 250 recent orders did not include neither ramen nor sushi. What's the problem here? That's 20% of the orders. As a manager, you'd like to use this information and knowledge to guide you to make better decisions on what to do with all of this information. For instance, how to improve the sales of ramen and or sushi and how to increase the sales overall. And also keep in mind, this is the data using the latest 250 orders. Things might change, and the battle for sushi versus ramen may not be over after all. Moving on to another example, this time we are going to use three different sets. Let's say you are a manager of a resort that offers restaurants, spas, and gift shops all throughout the property. Now in this example, let's say you have surveyed 1,000 guests. As they check out of your property, you surveyed them and asked them whether they have made purchases at the restaurants, gift shops, spas, or any combination of the three. In this survey, you found some data that 680 of your guests have made purchases at the restaurants while they were staying at your hotel. Meanwhile, 630 made purchases at the gift shops and 425 made purchases at the spa. Furthermore, you found out that 490 have made purchases at the restaurants and the gift shops, 
305 have made purchases at the restaurants and spas, 330 have made purchases at gift shops and spas, and 250 have made purchases at all three kinds of outlets. Now the question is, how many guests staying at your property did not make any purchases at any of these three outlets? Before we go into the Venn diagram, I would like to note that in this example, I'm going to use R for restaurants, G for gift shops, and S for spas. Here's how the Venn diagram might look like. Your NU, your universe, is 1000. And R for restaurants is 680. And G for gift shops, 630. And S for spas is 425. And R intersection G is 490, and R intersection S is 305, and G intersection S is 330, and finally, and R intersection G intersection S, that's the one in the middle, is 250. Now the question is, what is N, R union G union S complement? Meaning, what's outside of the three circles? With this type of problem, I like to work backwards. I typically like to start in the middle. I'll put 250 here. Then I continue up with 330, but 250 of that 330 has already been taken, so I'm left with 80. Moving on to the 305, but 250 of it, it's already been taken, so I'm left with 55 over here. And of the 490, 250 has already been taken, so I'm left with 240 over here to the left. I keep moving up. 425 minus 250 plus 55 plus 80. I'm left with 40 on the S side. I'm left with 60 on the G side after doing the same type of calculation. And with the R, I'm left with 135. Now please remember that you can pause at any time to see how everything works and to double check once again. As we are going to answer what's N, R, union G, union S, complement. So this is determined by 1000 minus all of the numbers that's inside the Venn diagram combined. 1000 minus 135 plus 40 plus 60 plus 240 plus 55, plus 80, plus 250. The order of what's inside the parentheses doesn't really matter because you're going to get the same results anyway, which is 1000 minus 860 after you add everything together. And the answer is then 140. Now as a manager, you might see this as a problem because 14% of your guests did not make any purchases in any of the outlets. And as such, there might be steps and strategies that you need to take in order to increase or optimize the purchases done by the guests who are staying at the hotel, and in particular at the spa, which is very, very small compared to the others. And also in this Venn diagram, you can see that some outlets, for instance, restaurants and gift shops, have a really nice uh, cross-selling platform. So these kinds of things that you need to improve all throughout your hotel. And here is everything once again, all together. I hope that's been quite informative for all of you. Just note that set, set equations, Venn diagrams, and many different forms of mathematics can truly be used in the realms of economics and business, especially in decision-making and strategizing for econ and business. Have an inspiring day. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you can get the latest updates of my future videos. Thank you guys.